Well, it is Monday the 3rd, and as you can see, the barley is really coming along this week. The heat is really pushing it to develop quick. A lot of it is just coming into the hard dough stage here. So we're actually not that far away from harvest here now. So that is looking very promising. This field should yield pretty well. We had a heck of a thunderstorm come through here on Saturday night. It doesn't look like it's caused any lodging in this field, but I do see there is a few here and there, especially closer to Nobleford, that did suffer some pretty bad lodging. But today's going to be a bit of an odd day. I got uh, about double the normal field load because I have to go on a field tour to all day tomorrow. So I got to try to do about 40 to 45 fields today. Well, I'm definitely seeing an increase in bugs this week. Uh, definitely some, some blister beetles and a whole lot of ligus are starting to mature now. Uh, this field, there's, you know, there's a fair amount of ligus nymphs in here. There were probably, if you counted the nymphs, we'd be over threshold, but some of these nymphs are too small to meet threshold. But uh, definitely in a week or two, we could be at threshold here. Nobleford area corn has grown probably two, two and a half feet since I was here last week. We are starting to tassel now. The tassels are just coming out. Doesn't look like they're producing pollen yet, but uh, it won't be too long. And uh, we do have some little ears starting to push out their silks, getting ready to be fertilized, so that's nice to see. Here's a field of durum that uh, should have been sprayed with a fungicide, and now we're paying the price. This durum looks like, you know, overall field appearance looks like it should be, you know, coming into the hard dough stage. However, it's basically late milk to early dough. There's still a lot of liquid in the heads. Uh, just all these leaves are pretty much burned off with a combination of tan spot. There's a bit of rust and septoria, a little bit of everything going on in here. Here's the same variety of durum on the same farm. I seeded, uh, I think, within just a couple days. And you can see the overall appearance is much more green. Staging is still basically exactly the same. We're, uh, it's, you know, still technically milk stage, moving towards soft dough. However, this field did get a fungicide back early in, uh, in July. And you can see, well, we do have some surfactant marks on the leaves. Overall, we are much more green in here, and these are going to develop and yield quite a lot better. Huge difference in this pea field this week. The low spots have kind of prematurely ripened due to root rot, but the rest of these areas here are just ripening due to heat, basically. So pods are pretty well developed. These lower pods are starting to rattle down here, and they are brown and, and hard. A little farther up, we're still kind of green and leathery in some of these very top pods. Put the peas inside. Should be hard. Starting to turn yellow, yeah. So pretty much this would be a desiccation timing. Peas don't squish, they just split. Not seeing too much for grass green, just lime green. So this would be a good timing for desiccation, whether you're using heat and glyphosate or a Reglone Ion product. Well, dryland canola fields are looking really good this week and developing well. Just did a little sweep here of bugs and look what I found. It's, man, it's, can't really zoom in on them, but that's a lacewing larvae actually attacking and killing a diamondback moth larvae. So that is an example of a beneficial predator at work. Um, those lacewing larvae are also called uh, aphid lions, I believe, and they can eat, I think it was uh, somewhere like, some something ridiculous, like a thousand aphids in their life cycle. So just absolutely crazy how much they can eat. Well, there's a corner of a barley pivot and this dryland barley here is getting really close to combine timing. As you can see, it's drying down pretty rapidly now. We're into the hard dough stage. A lot of these kernels now are getting solid enough. It's getting tough to get a thumbnail into them. I can make a dent and the dent kind of stays in there. So we're definitely losing moisture at this point. It won't be too long before we start to see combines rolling. Here's some of the Corteva plots by Lethbridge. So here's Prospect, which is safe to spray ahead of canola. These were all sprayed 30 days ago. That's glyphosate alone. There's Corax for ahead of cereals. And Paradigm ahead of cereals. You can see both of these did a lot better job on the canola. Here's the herbicide trials. Here's Simplicity and Pixaro. Always a great choice, especially for feedlot fields. Resvant. Check strip, Venza, so nice Simplicity, Lumivia, and Promenox, that was it. And tried them, all in one. 
out here by Coaldale to take a look at some uh, bluegrass. Looking real good today. Out in the oats by Colehurst, and as you can see, these are growing real rapidly. We're coming up on penultimate leaf. We're tillering out real nice. These are doing really well, growing super fast. So, love seeing these every week. The older on wheat by Colehurst is developing uh, pretty much on pace, uh, but uh, this bacterial leaf stripe really taking a, a bite out of a lot of these slag leaves in here. It's being real hard on this crop. Seems like it's a very susceptible variety to it. But uh, the heads are filling out as best they can. We're uh, not quite in the soft dough stage yet, but uh, these heads are getting filled and getting heavy, so that is nice to see. And the malt barley by Colerst is developing really rapidly as well. It is in hard dough stage now. Getting to be pretty tough, these kernels. You can't really squeeze anything out of them anymore. But uh, looking pretty good. We'll have some beer out of this before we know it. Here's a canola field that is starting to show some symptoms of Slaritinia. When you look through the canopy, you can see the odd tip here and there that is turning brown. So that's usually a dead giveaway that you've either got black leg or Slaritinia in the, in the under canopy. And you're just seeing the symptoms up on the top here now, where the disease has been developing underneath over the last couple weeks. So you get down here and look, sure enough right here, we've got a really bad case of Slaritinia right at the bottom so this should just crack right off for me here you can see it's completely kinked over slurosha little mouse poop looking things developing right inside there looks like this one here we got a little touch of black leg stem lesion on it this one here a little bit more black leg yet this one over here looks like it is rotted right off that looks like it was black leg as well so kind of a couple different diseases going on in here but uh, yeah, hopefully it doesn't lead to lodging, but you can see this one here, also very thin, crispy Slaritinia. There's those uh, ergot bodies right there, or not ergot bodies, Slarochas. Here's a closer look at some of those black leg infected stems. See this bigger one here. Severity definitely like a five out of five here now. So the crown area is all black. And you can see the root below it is completely fibrous and dead. This one here about the same. You can pretty much see the whole cross section is black and dead. So five out of five. And this one here about the same as well. This little plant was probably affected by it fairly early. Probably from the two or three leaf stage. Which is about the time you spray for black leg. And you can see it never even managed to set any pods at all. It looks like it flowered but it never really had the guts to do anything. Whereas these bigger plants definitely did however they're really starting to die off here now so they uh, will probably likely only produce what we call pepper which blows up the back of the combine so well the peas down by mcgrath are looking really good this week they are substantially shorter than they were last week i think they have shrunk about a foot and a half over the last week since i was here last the uh, volume of pods and the mass of a lot of these pods like these these are huge pods are just absolutely crushing the stems underneath. So when you get down and you look into the canopy, you can see a lot of those stems are now laying down on the ground. The pods are still up above the ground by, you know, eight to 10 inches anyways. So we shouldn't have too much of a problem missing pods, but I predict we're gonna have uh, some pretty well plugged up combines, which should make for some uh, really fun drone imagery. Few field wheat down by McGrath is looking pretty good, developing pretty well, although it could use a little bit more rain. And even though this variety is resistant to rust, you can see there's been quite a bit of rust has been continuing to spread through the canopy in this field. Here's my first seeded barley by Lethbridge, and uh, interestingly, there's a little bit of ergot in here. Don't see that too terribly often in barley. But uh, this barley is maturing very well. This is Austinson variety. And it is down pretty much at that 30% moisture level now. I can just barely dent the kernels of the thumbnail. So that means it is swath timing for this field. Well, here's my most advanced cornfield by Lethbridge. And it's just coming into the blister stage now. So a lot of the silking and tasseling has pretty much finished what it needs to do. Fertilization overall looking very good so far. But we'll see how it develops over the next few weeks. Next week's video will probably be a little bit different. It'll probably be a little bit late and it'll have a different guest star. I'm gonna go camping with the family all week and take a little vacation before harvest. 
So I'm gonna have someone else, uh, another volunteer, to uh, take over filming for me, and I'll edit it when I get back. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.